Welcome to Washington, D.C. I'm on the move again. For three weeks, I packed up all my tools, hit the road, and traveled to my nation's capital to help my brother with some projects around his house. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. This week I am getting started on what I think is the biggest project I have done thus far. But I'm not going to be alone. My brother and I are going to be tackling this project together. We are going to be completely gutting and renovating his kitchen. And this is actually the first full renovation I have done where we are going to be stripping this kitchen down to the nuts and bolts and completely starting from scratch. So I have a feeling I'm going to learn a lot and get really stretched on this project. So with that being said, Let's head back to my brothers and get started on this project. Okay, let's talk about my brother's kitchen. But really quickly, I just need to get something out of the way so that I don't have to keep saying my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother. My brother's name is Jordan. And if you have been a subscriber for a little bit, you also know my husband's name is Jordan. This was not my first choice when I thought about my life, but what can I say? It was a popular name in the late 80s, early 90s. So now let's get back to the start of this kitchen renovation at Jordan's house. My, my brother. So Jordan and my sister-in-law, Kelsey, have a very stereotypical city row house. And what a row house is, it just means that one or both sides of your house are connected to another house. This is a pretty popular style in most cities where there is limited space and there's a lot of people. And in Jordan's case, his house is only connected on one side, which actually does make a big difference as far as row houses go because there's more windows throughout his house. So there's more light that comes in in, which is always a good thing. We like natural light. And this house is also your very stereotypical flipped house where some person or company bought it, fixed it up real, real quick and cheap, and then got it back on the market to make a profit. So over the last five years while they've lived in the house, we've all just kind of sat back and wondered why. Why did they do some of the things that they did? For example, covering up original hardwood floors with carpet. And I think the worst part of this flipped renovation was the kitchen. First off, this kitchen has never Ever fit my brother and sister-in-law style. They like industrial and mid-century modern, clean lines, brighter colors, and this kitchen has always been kind of dark and drabby. And the worst part is it also doesn't utilize the space to the best of its ability. And I am definitely speaking from experience when you live in a city and you have to make the most of a small space, every little nook and cranny has to be used to the best of its ability. And this new kitchen and layout was definitely going to do that. And over several months while Jordan and Kelsey were kind of starting to plan out this kitchen renovation, they would call and FaceTime me from time to time asking for advice on layouts and stuff like that. And about a month before we got started on this renovation, I drove to DC to help Kelsey and Jordan kind of work out some final details. Using my iPad and 3D model program, I was able to show them different options for backsplash Flash, countertops, and also just kind of work out some kinks in their design that might lead to issues down the road. And since I was kind of involved in all of this process, I figured let's actually just help my brother execute this design. My brother knows how to do a lot and has like a certain set of skills, so I was super excited to learn from him. But at the same time, I also feel like I brought something to the table as far as like design, aesthetic, and also when you're working on a project, it's just really nice to be able to bounce some ideas off of somebody else. So after coming to that conclusion of like, hey, let's do this thing, I'm helping with the renovation, I drove back to my brother's house in DC and we got started on demo. The first day, not much happened. My brother made me a lovely afternoon latte. We sat around and talked about what the heck we were about to get ourselves into. And we also talked about a loose timeline. Oh. Something I haven't mentioned yet. A few days before this first demo day, my brother and sister-in-law hopped in the car with their four kids. Yes, that is right. Count them one, two, three, four. Four kids. Hopped in the car and drove to Wisconsin where he left his wife and kids to hang out with family and friends for three weeks while we tackled this kitchen renovation. And we also kept everything we were doing a secret from my sister-in-law because, well, I guess my family just got really 
really into surprise makeovers after my mom's surprise bedroom makeover. <gasps> So we wrapped up day one by packing up a few things, dancing, that's important, and then taking a few pictures for some stuff to list on Facebook Marketplace and calling it a day. Day one was very productive. Yay us! So then we went to bed, woke up, and this was the real demo day, so we got right to work. Okay, maybe not like right to work. I needed a moment to enjoy the latte Jordan made me. My brother is paying me in lattes and I'm totally fine with that. So we headed into day two, the real demo day with a caffeine buzz, a set of sledgehammers and a can do attitude. And the main goals of this renovation was to make the space feel bigger, make the kitchen have more storage and just be more functional. And of course, have this space catch a vibe. Like baby, are you coming for the ride? That joke was funnier in my head. But seriously, this kitchen desperately needed to have a cool city kitchen vibe that fit my brother and sister-in-law style. They're really cool people and their kitchen needed to reflect that. So it's demo time. And instead of doing just like some plain old demo montage, I figured let's talk about the new design while I'm ripping out the old design. So we started off by removing all of the cabinets and appliances off of this back wall. And to keep this area more open and make the space feel bigger, we replaced these upper cabinets with open shelving. And you might be thinking with a small city kitchen, wouldn't you wanna keep as many cabinets as possible? Well, there was so much extra storage being added throughout the space that Jordan and Kelsey were able to get rid of these upper cabinets in this area and replace them with open shelves. This also was going to make the space feel so much bigger, not having these dark, bulky cabinets drag the space down. And with the addition of the open shelves, we also were able to add a cool exposed hood over the stove, and this gave the kitchen a bit of an industrial touch. And my favorite thing that I could not wait to demo was this weird half island. Collectively, everybody, friends, family, we just didn't understand this thing. I mean, I slightly get what they were going for as far as putting in an island and making it small so that it didn't take up much room, but this thing did not work. The two countertop heights made it so that really both of them were small, so it made it hard to cook and prep food at. And then because of the way this island was built, the two cabinets that were in this island were really thin and they basically added no storage. So in this weird kind of like half island countertop space, we were going to put a nice normal island that was going to add a ton of storage and actually have a usable countertop. And the island has two large drawers for pots and pans and a cabinet that was now going to have the microwave. So let's just say it was a good day when we saw the last of this weird half island. R.I.P. half island. R.I.P. We tried removing the backsplash by like slowly chipping away at it, but of course that was taking too long. So Jordan got out his drywall saw and just sawed through the drywall and we carried the backsplash out in one piece. But of course now we had a giant open wall we were gonna have to fix, but I was also really excited for this because I have been wanting to learn how to drywall and now here was my opportunity. Whoever did this lovely renovation covered up the original beautiful oak floors. I mean, these are also real oak floors, but they just covered them up instead of fixing them up. Then came the fun part of ripping up all the tile in the kitchen. I think the best part about this kitchen renovation and the part I was looking forward to seeing the most was the blending of the two spaces. Before the kitchen and dining room area really felt like two totally different spaces that just happen to be next to each other. And this is the part of the design I really pushed my brother to do because I knew this was going to utilize the space to the best of its ability. And that of course was doing an L-shaped bench like I have at my house. And my brother also had a coffee bar station. I got my coffee bar station idea from him. And his coffee bar was kind of like out in the middle of the space and closed off the opening between the living room area and the 
kitchen and dining room area. So I also knew by doing an L-shaped bench and pushing the dining area up into that one corner, this would make enough room at the other end of the bench to do some upper and lower cabinets to make a new coffee bar station that was pushed out of the way and tucked around the corner. And the final thing to make the space more cohesive and why we were ripping up the tile in the kitchen was my brother hired a company to come in and replace the tile floors with new wood floors to match the rest of the floors on the first level. And originally the floors on this level were stained and finished to be really, really dark. So this company was going to come in and sand them all down and refinish them to be much lighter. And ripping up these tile floors was hard, but my brother talked to one of his friends who's an actual professional contractor, and he told us to stop and go get bigger crowbars. So we did that, and when we switched over to the bigger crowbars, that made all the difference. It was still hard work, but it went so much faster. And after getting all the tile up and removing all the screws and nails, we had one final thing to get done on this demo day, and that was getting the power that was in the wall for the microwave down through the floor and into the general area where the island was gonna be. And I know absolutely nothing about electrical work, but luckily my brother was an electrical apprentice in high school, so he knows about electrical work and like what's up to code and what's not up to code and all that fun stuff. And I am just kind of a fairly good problem solver, so even though I know nothing about electrical work, I was still able able to help by looking at the problem of getting the wire from point A to point B and trying to figure out a solution. So we started off by using a circular saw to cut some pieces of the original wood floors out so that we could see what we were working with. And when we ripped up the original wood floors, we were met by more wooden slats. And at this point, I should probably mention that my brother's house is almost 100 years old. So with a house that old, you just never know what you're gonna find because standards for building a hundred years ago were very different than they are in 2022. And we could see through these kind of like vertical slats and see where the studs were. And unfortunately, the studs weren't placed in a way that was really helpful for us to get a wire through the floor and to this island. So Jordan was a little stumped and me having no electrical experience, I kind of tossed out the idea of cutting a thin little strip in these slatted boards and then running the wire up and down over the studs. Jordan liked this idea but he also didn't like this idea because when the wire comes up over the stud that when the guys came in to cover up the old wood floors with new wood floors that when they're hammering in the floors they would hit the wire and of course we don't want that we don't want wire and nails mixing together not a good thing. So again, me just trying to brainstorm, I asked him if there was by chance like a thin metal plate that he could put in those areas that would protect the wire so that when the guys are hammering in, if they hit a metal plate, they're not gonna damage the wire. And lo and behold to me, that does exist. So the next day Jordan ran out and got a bunch of these little metal plates that he hammered into the wood so that it would protect the wire. My body is sore and I don't wanna do anything more. <laughs> So obviously the kitchen is demoed and tomorrow the guys that my brother hired to do the floors are coming and they're going to be putting in new wood floors in the kitchen. And not only are they working on the first level floors, they're also doing the floors upstairs. And that means everything on the first level and second level have to be off of the floors. So today my brother and I are going to be moving all of the furniture to his basement. How I'm gonna help my brother lift half of these things, I'm not sure, but I'm just here for the ride. So let's go. <laughs> So after moving the entire contents of my brother's house to his basement, I actually left. 
I peaced out for five days and I drove back to my house because although it sounds really fun living in a crammed basement with my brother and his dog, I had a few projects I could work on here. And after five days, I came back to this. Look at how pretty those floors are. I don't know who my brother hired, but they did amazing work. These lighter floors completely transformed this kitchen and it's not even done yet. And we just had a few more things to get done before we could finally start putting some stuff back into this kitchen and putting this thing together. We still had a giant open wall where we cut out the backsplash. So my brother did some quick electrical work. I think he added an outlet for the hood that went above the stove and then we could get to drywalling. And drywalling is actually really easy. So we just had to cut a bunch of pieces of drywall and piece them together like a jigsaw puzzle and screw them in place. And once all that was done, Jordan took some joint compound and joint tape and covered up all of the seams and then we had to let that sit overnight and the next day I woke up and did a little bit of sanding on that wall and then we added more joint compound and had to wait for that to dry and then sand again and after we got that second coat of joint compound on the wall we were gonna jump right into putting together cabinets but then we realized something all of the rest of the walls on the first floor were kind of dirty so instead of jumping right into making cabinets, we took the time to paint the entire first floor, which even though it really wasn't our timeline and part of our plan, I'm so glad we did it because these walls were really dirty and definitely needed a fresh coat of paint. And this is actually where I am going to be ending part one. Obviously this was a huge time consuming renovation. So I knew this was going to have to be broken up into multiple parts. And it took us over a week to just make Make it to where we could finally start putting things back into this kitchen and start putting everything together. And I know I showed you the 3D renderings of what this kitchen is going to look like, but obviously plugging a bunch of stuff into a program is a lot easier than actually executing it. And you know with every makeover, there's going to be problems. And in this renovation, there were plenty of them. So you're gonna get to see all of the problems and things we had to deal with in the next few parts. And on top of it, to make things just really fun, I tackled a whole other makeover in another room in my brother's house, which you will get to see in my next video. So if you wanna follow along as my brother and I renovate not only his kitchen, but what seemed like his entire house by the end of it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.